Offshore from Los Angeles and the bustling coast of Southern California lie the Channel Islands. Given their location, these islands are surprisingly remote and except for Santa Catalina, uninhabited. They were once home to Native American groups such as the Chumash, with evidence of human occupation reaching back at least 13,000 years. Contact with the Spanish, starting in the 1500s, ultimately led to the forced resettlement of these people from their island home to the mainland. In November 2021, we take venture on a tour of all the islands except San Nicolas and San Clemente, which are restricted naval training areas and off limits to the general public. We depart Newport Beach and cross the San Pedro Channel en route to Santa Catalina. On our way, we pass many ships waiting to unload their cargoes at the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. We arrive at Howland's Landing on Santa Catalina Island and call for permission to tie up at one of the many mooring buoys. We are the only boat. Under normal times, moorings would all be occupied. Relaxing in the cockpit are Chris, to the left, who has captained Venture for many years, with Guy and myself. Nikki is taking the photo and we meet her in a moment. Following a peaceful night, Guy is busy in the galley preparing breakfast. With Nikki at the helm, fortified with coffee, we are soon underway en route to Smuggler's Cove on Santa Cruz Island. Chris points out a grove of olive trees. We find the swells make this anchorage too rolly, so we move around the corner to Little Scorpion Anchorage. Here, a group of kayakers explore the rocky islets. A fish boat checks his pots. Chris and Guy ready the main tender. It has not been used in a while and air is added to the tubes. The crane lowers it alongside the bulwark door. First stop is a rocky outcrop, providing a roost for mostly pelicans. Sea caves are common along the rugged coastline. This one is small lit by sunlight through a hole in the rocks. We plan to enter much larger caves when the weather settles down. 
another craggy outcrop, this time shared by both pelicans and cormorants. The following day, Nikki has to return to the world of work and we cross the Santa Barbara Channel in dense fog. A foghorn sounds its mournful cry as we approach the town of Santa Barbara, still concealed in the mist. We are greeted by vast numbers of pelicans. We pass a Fleming 58 in the harbour. We say farewell to Nikki, who will be taking a train back to Newport Beach. Okay, I got up. We have a quick turnaround to recross the Santa Barbara Channel and head to Betches Bay on Santa Rosa Island. At 84 square miles, this is a large island, three times the size of Manhattan. It is here that 13,000 year old human remains were excavated, as well as those of bones of pygmy mammoths. This journey remains especially memorable because of numerous encounters with so many pelicans. The following morning we set off for San Miguel, the outermost of the islands. It receives the full force of the cold California current and its closest point on the mainland is infamous Point Conception, just 26 miles away. The water is choppy as we turn into Kyla Bay and we seek out a protected area for our anchorage. We spot four out-of-place palm trees, 
likely planted for the filming of Mutiny on the Bounty with Clark Gable in 1935. We take the tender for a recce along the margins of the bay. Elephant seals are everywhere until a point where large swells sweep ashore to explode upon the sand dunes. Across the bay, Venture appears very small. A seagull perches on the outboard, hoping for a handout. The following morning we take a closer look at elephant seals, watching carefully through binoculars for any hint of concern on their part. The following day, we continue westwards around the point, keeping well offshore. Reefs with jagged rocks and bursting surf extend well out from the land. Once we reach Point Bennett, the most westerly point in California, every beach, no matter how small, is packed with seals, even on the rocks and well inland. While we watch them, they watch us and are very skittish, so we must keep our distance. Reportedly at least 170,000 seals of various types now inhabit these islands with 30,000 on San Miguel alone. They were virtually wiped out in the 19th century and were believed to be extinct in the 1880s. Elephant seals may just appear like blubber on the beach, but they can dive as deep as 4,000 feet and stay submerged for up to two hours. Males weigh as much as 6,000 pounds. From San Miguel we move back to Santa Cruz and take a quick look at the caves we hope to visit. There are many along the north coast of the island. Most are occupied by noisy seals. But there remains too much swell. The tide is high, the sun is in the wrong direction so we decide to return tomorrow morning. We anchor in Forney Cove. The last time we were here, in December 2013, we experienced ferocious Santa Ana winds gusting to 60 knots. Tonight it is calm with a magnificent sunset. The following morning, we make our way to the Painted Cave. 
believed to be the largest and longest sea cave in the world. We hold position offshore while taking turns to enter the cave in our small tender with its electric outboard. The tide is low and swells have subsided. We penetrate deep inside the innermost recess to the accompaniment of eerie sounds from seals lurking in the dark. We move along the northern coast of Santa Cruz Island and make a drive-by into Potato Cove. Natural foam forms an intricate lace doily on the surface of the sea. We head now for the smallest and even more remote Santa Barbara Island. The only anchorage is described as an open roadstead and we are not sure it will be calm enough so we reserve plan B to move to Santa Catalina if it proves to be too rough. It's okay. White blobs on the hillside turn out to be another large colony of pelicans. This is our last evening, so we take a group photo. The following morning, Guy prepares Eggs Benedict for our final breakfast, before we up anchor and relocate to the exposed southern end of the island. Here, rollers from the open Pacific Ocean sweep ashore, creating impressive blowholes. Wildlife is amazing with cormorants, pelicans and seals high above the cliffs. Seals frolic around the boat. We have encountered much less kelp than mentioned in the guidebooks, but here it is beautiful. 
Kelp can grow as much as two feet per day, but is vulnerable to warming sea temperatures and predation by sea urchins. Sea otters keep sea urchins under control, but these animals, along with seals and whales, were hunted to virtual extinction in the 19th century. We move to the extreme tip of the island before reversing course and heading for the mainland. The next substantial land beyond this point is Asia. We see few dolphins or whales on this trip, but they are numerous in these waters. We enter the breakwater on this November afternoon in Southern California. It is Sunday. The harbor is packed with boats. Brollies on the beach. Sailboats galore, packed with newbies learning to sail in near zero wind. We are back. The sun is setting behind the palm trees as we reach our berth at the close of another memorable journey.